Hi, good morning, everyone. Okay, uh, my name is Soma. I'm from the Data Ecosystem Development Division of MDEC, and I'll be the moderator for your session this, this morning. Uh, the, the title of the session is uh, Backstage Access, Success and Learnings from Early Adopters Data Journey. Uh, as you well know, uh, MDEC nurtures, enables, and empowers uh, digital businesses. Our continued efforts to drive the digitalization agenda includes amplifying the use of data and data technology, such as uh, data analytics and AI. And this will be the key focus of the session today. Uh, data and data technology would enable business enterprises to reach new markets, better serve existing customers, streamline operations, and monetize raw and analyze data. Uh, as part of MDEX, uh, nation building efforts to propel uh, into the fourth industrial revolution, we want Malaysian businesses uh, to become more data driven, leveraging on things like data analytics and AI, as mentioned just now, to make informed decisions. Uh, for long-term sustainability and help the country to ride out the COVID-19 disruption challenges. Uh, we are very lucky to have uh, two distinguished uh, panelists this morning with us uh, who will share about their experience, their organization's uh, learnings and how they actually became uh, uh, data-driven. So allow me to start with the first panelist, uh, Inchit Samsol. He is the Chief Technology and Innovation Officer from PLUS Malaysia. Uh, we know PLUS as uh, one of the uh, biggest, uh, largest uh, highway concessioner in the country or even the region. Uh, Sam, as is known, is a driven business technology leader with uh, broad C-level experience in driving innovative growth, spanning in diverse range of industries, including transportation, utilities, logistics, telecommunication, and government. Uh, he has bootstrap startups, driven corporate innovation, and is a passionate speaker in various areas such as uh, mobility, open data, geospatial, entrepreneurship, and all pillars of e-commerce. Uh, Sam holds a, a research degree and uh, engineering degree from University of Melbourne, Australia. Our second panelist is uh, Mr. Kevin Koo. He is the CIO of Sunway Group. Uh, as we know, Sunway is one of the largest conglomerates in Malaysia. Uh, he is also the director uh, leading the Sunway Shared Services Center, and he has over 20 years of experience in the IT field. Uh, as the group CIO, Kevin is tasked to devise and implement the overall IT strategy for the Sunway Group. Uh, including things like cloud adoption, implementation, uh, data analytics, robotics, and even cognitive automation and Internet of Things. Uh, he holds an MBA from Victoria University. Uh, good morning, gentlemen. Thank you for joining us this morning. Good morning. Okay, so right, so we we have your name, we have your background, we know what. Uh, uh, but can you at least uh, can we start with uh, uh, explaining or deep diving into your respective roles in your organization? Uh, can we start with Sam? Um, sure. So um, I'm the CTIO for PLUS and I'm also the CEO for their subsidiary called Teras Technology, which builds toll systems for many highways in Malaysia outside PLUS. Um, as you know, PLUS is a 24 by 7 business. Uh, it cannot be closed down because all of you rely on highways to get from point A to point B. And uh, we have been moving ourselves from an analog organization into a more data-driven digital organization. We, we, we've been doing a lot to actually move ourselves from a competency, manpower, and technology point of view. Uh, at the same time, my mandate is to make money from putting technology in, not just spending money. So <laughs> therefore, <laughs> uh, so therefore, it's a crucial thing that we also empower uh, our day-to-day -day activities. So lots of internal digitization, about 200 or so, uh, that oh. we turn manual processes into digital and also digitalization uh, processes to keep more to have more automation in place. Why? Because customers are expecting that their mobility experience should be better from <laughs> point A to point B. We all expect that uh, so that we can actually have more value from the toll that we pay instead of complaining mm -hmm. about the price of toll. Right. Thanks, Sam. Uh, Kevin. Sure. Hi. Hi. Good morning, everybody. So um, as Soma rightfully pointed out, um, I, I, I play two roles, uh, similarly like Sam as well. Um, so as the director for Shared Services, so we are a captive Shared Services Center providing IT services across all our business unit. So we have uh, 12 uh, business unit today from retail, healthcare, you know, hospitality, you name it. Um, mm -hmm. So what we do is that we provide common uh, shared services in the IT in the area of infrastructure, network, you know, business solutions, things like uh, HR, ERP. Then we also have our in-house uh, developer. So mm -hmm. on the other role, um, as the group CIO, so we are tasked to, you know, devise and implement IT strategies. So it's 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 challenging in the fact that because we have uh, 
13 uh, different business units that really are very diverse in nature. So we have, you know, a brick and mortar company like the Construction Boys, the Quarry Boys, to the more advanced like the healthcare and the retail. So really, I think the challenge is to find um, what makes sense to them. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we cannot have a a, a size that fits all shoes Mm -hmm. kind of concept. Um, I think the other point that uh, we are tasked to do is on the cybersecurity. So we all know that, you know, cybersecurity is a hot topic now. So really to, to find the right balance uh, across the group uh, in terms of the IT strategy. So that, that's, that's the real challenge. And, and, you know, it's something that we are constantly uh, working on. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Kevin. Okay. So before we deep dive in, into both the areas that you guys mentioned about, uh, just to the audience, uh, guys, please feel free to, to, to post your questions uh, to you have for the for, for the panelists uh, in the comment section. Uh, if possible, please identify who the question is targeted at, and then we'll answer it as we go along. So please, 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 please. So let's move on to the next question. So today's business environment, you know, is changing at a phenomenal rate. Okay, leaving Mr. COVID aside. Okay, and technology has actually played a, a key role in driving some of that change. Okay, uh, this mostly includes disruptive business models, use of big data, acceleration of uh, business interaction, so on. So what can you describe some of the business imperatives for, for you in today's business environment with and without Mr. COVID, okay, uh, and preparing the business resilience and sustainability? Uh, Sam, you want to start first? Uh, okay, so I suppose to me, it's uh, there's two main ways that uh, we've been doing it. Number one is uh, top down and uh, actually top down means from the shareholders uh, mm-hmm. and within the board itself. Uh, board members and shareholders need to actually be in the position to uh, understand the benefits of uh, data driven initiatives and data driven um, uh, plans that we want to put in place because otherwise it is seen as a cost center. Uh, and uh, so that would be uh, very difficult to actually justify, especially when uh, shareholders are always looking for better returns over their investment. In plus mm-hmm. case, uh, our shareholders are all of you, EPF and Azana. So if we deliver lower returns, then your EPF is also a little bit lower. <laughs> so therefore, it is very important to us that anything that we, that we do, uh, it, it is actually uh, viable from uh, an, an investment point of view. So technology is also seen in that way, especially now when we go into the next paradigm of data, not just tech, technology. Second pillar is bottom up, uh, mm-hmm. where, you know, people like us in this call, we are generally the, the thinkers. We are not down there doing the day-to-day uh, coding or installation and stuff like that. So those mm-hmm. guys, they, they need to be in a mindset and uh, perspective that they are also the beneficiary uh, mm-hmm. of what's going to happen. So data-driven initiatives and roadmap and anything that to do with data, they need to un- understand that their job is not going anywhere. Their, yeah. uh, their competency is actually going to increase. They are mm-hmm. going to bring in more efficiency uh, in the way that they do work every day. Perhaps they have to unlearn a few things so that they can learn a few new ways of uh, making the same process happen in a shorter time. So I find that having these two uh, going hand in hand uh, with with the third element, which is the most important one, which is customer. Mm -hmm. Uh, If we do these things, but kita, you know, shock sendiri, customers don't know anything about it. Uh, we live in our own bubble and customers don't see any difference, then what's the point? Uh, point yeah. Customers are going to go to social media and you know, start to submit uh, 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 comments that uh, you know we are an old arcade, uh, we haven't changed for the last 30 years. So more importantly, customers need to, need to think that, that they are, uh, customers need to see that they are interacting with an organization that's changing to meet their pre-COVID and uh, COVID situation. Okay, thanks, Sam. That's 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 kind of interesting three prong approach. Uh, Kevin, how about from your side? Um, well, yeah. So um, just a bit of uh, history, right? So Sunway Group's uh, digitalization journey actually started way back, you know, twenty years ago. Uh, perhaps back then, you know, the word digitalization or digital transformation was completely unheard of. So mm-hmm. back then, I think we were using you know Lotus Note as our messaging platform, and we started wow. developing a lot of. A workflow applications to replace the manual process uh, on on that platform. So much so until I think year 2016, we have more than 350 workflows that was uh, written and used for the group. 
So with strong and experienced uh, leadership, right, uh, who has foresight and belief and embrace in technology over the years, the group has actually transformed quite a bit. And, you know, it, it is similar to what Sam has said, you know, top down. But again, the bottom up approach to embrace the technology to, to, to help drive the implementation, it's, it's very key. You know, today, today we talk about a lot of, uh, you know, cloud adoption, web and mobile data, um, as well as, you know, 5G. Some of us are, are looking to, you know, blockchain AI. So all this wouldn't be possible if, if number one, we don't have uh, strong leadership that has, you know, that foresight to push, push down all this strategy. So one of the things that I like that I participated, you know, in, in the business is that we are always constantly challenged um, to look at new areas. And, mm. and, you know, we are always asked about, you know, what can we do? What can we change? What can you do, you know, to, to make five times your revenue, five times your profit? So mm. we've, we've, we've very tradition. I think we, we are, we, we want to challenge the business that if we are serious into the business, uh, we want to be at least, you know, the top three in that market. Okay. So, you know, we, we need to always change our mindset needs to shift. And, and I was recent, some recent articles that, you know, I, I, I came across mentioned that, you know, with that Mr. COVID around, business has to change 10 times faster. You know, business right. needs to make decisions almost instantaneously or risk being left behind. So the question is, what, what sort of, you know, data, what sort of uh, push factor or pull factor does the business need to have to, to make a decision? I like somehow business uh, has pivoted. Well, I don't know how successful they are during this pandemic. Things like I came across like, you know, some hotels are converting their rooms to to, to workspaces, right? They, they, do, they do rental and they lease out even hotels room to long-term uh, rental, disrupting the property re, uh, rental market today. You know, mm. cinemas, unfortunately, they are closed down. But, you know, during that, that period, they were also talking to rent out spaces. Uh, mm-hmm. converting them to eSport, you know, have okay. games, rent a space with big screens, you know, good good sound system. And I think in, in Singapore, that's what I heard, that they're converting planes into dining restaurant, right? Some people, you know, miss flight so much that they want so to be in the plane. They miss too. that airline food, la. yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so, so, so all these are decisions that needs to be made, you know, and I believe that these decisions, you know, weren't, weren't just made just like that somebody slept overnight and, and thought, hey, why don't I do this? So I think there has to be a lot of thought process that, that uh, comes into place. And the question is, where does this uh, information comes from? You know, why, okay. why, why they do such things? So I think data plays a very important role in some of this uh, business strategy. Okay, so that, that's a good uh, uh, point, Kevin. So it basically segues into my next question. You know, how important is data in realizing this business imperative? You know, basically, you know, how does the help, help, how does the data help in creating value and decision making? Right. And basically, how important is data for your organization? Sam? Uh, OK, so um, to us, data is uh, is the key in business sustainability and viability. Um, for example, um, toll collection, highway is a toll business and we collect uh, the uh, payment due for the journey that the customers have, have done. So um, by having a, a mediocre uh, data collection and data presentation layer, then we don't see the gaps in the collection uh, because we serve about close to 1.7 billion customers a day uh, okay. in and out of the backbone of our, of our country, a thousand kilometers. So uh, only via data, uh, not by application and not by any other way that we can see how creative some customers can be. Uh, yes, they are paying, but sometimes they are paying not the fee that they're supposed to pay. They are paying half of the fee or maybe, yeah, or uh, so for, for example, a commercial uh, 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 lorry is paying a, a passenger class one fee. So only right. data can tell you that. Uh, at this right. point, yeah. So therefore, uh, uh, it, the standard way of looking at data in terms of presenting reports is not good enough. Uh, data needs to be presented in an, an analytical or analytics approach. And even to a point that we are now, uh, for the last two years, we've been doing machine learning so that we can actually predict more and more of what the data is saying to us. 
okay. about you know patterns of people uh, moving in and out, uh, patterns of payment, uh, journey, travel, and stuff like that. Uh, along Plus Highway, we don't only have um, the pavement of a thousand kilometers, but we have twenty-four mini malls, uh, rest areas. Areas, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That you stop and you know go to the toilet, buy some buy some food. So there's eight hundred merchants there. It's like a mm. mall. 800 okay. merchants that, uh, that are expecting people to stop by and buy something and stuff like that. So we are connecting data from people who are moving into data of people who are buying uh, so that then we can actually bring more uh, long term I mean, uh, journey satisfaction. Because again, when you use a plus highway as opposed to normal KL highway, the highway, the, your, your journey is a bit longer, two hours, three hours or even in festive season, 10 hours. So uh, let's make your, your journey a bit more predictable mm -hmm. and a bit more connected and a bit more rewarding, uh, especially uh, when you want to plan ahead because this is all about time saving. Uh, if Plus does not use data more effectively, then we are in competition to the other operators who use Plus, who use data more effectively. Operators mm -hmm. such as Budget Airlines, they use data very, very well uh, so that then, you know, budget airlines and, and, and even other forms of businesses actually use data uh, more efficiently to disrupt the other service provider. So we are a traditional one that's been there for 30 years. So I, I tell my, my management team uh, all the time, in another 30 years, would the name plus be synonymous with highway or could it be something else? Interesting. And, and on that note, uh, Sam, you mentioned that you have a lot of data sources. Are you also looking at data, uh, external data sources? I mean, do you get data from other sources to actually help with your analytics inside, in-house? Yeah, yeah. So we have collaborations uh, together with Waze, for example, uh, so that then they can share a certain level of uh, aggregated data. Uh, mm -hmm. We also have been learning about data sharing and data access agreements that we actually do with certain people I can't mention so that then we can actually acquire or have access to data that we never had before. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a give and take uh, and hence why op open data mindset uh, is very important in terms of uh, businesses and the, and the national economy understands that the bigger um, derivative of uh, benefit coming from having the data to move from point A to point B, not having the data stagnant in mm -hmm. a data uh, storage somewhere. So data sharing and data access is very important. So we have a few collaboration actually. As a, uh, so we, we are also trying to extend to local governments and local council along the thousand kilometers that, that we have. Right. Interesting. Okay. Over to you, Kevin. Uh, how important is data and are you also looking at uh, data from external sources? Yep. So, um, you know, there is saying that data is the new oil. Some even say that data is more valuable than oil because, you know, oil you can only use once. Limited. But, yeah. yeah, but for data, you can reuse countless times and for many different purposes, right? So in many ways, data has, you know, become very important for us. Um, data do not lie. The, and deep understanding and analyzing of data will provide very fresh uh, insights into businesses. So some, some of us hear that, you know, uh, not even insights, you know, sometimes we even question ourselves, hey, you know, what happened? Why, why, why is this so? You know, it's weird. So a lot of understanding analytics needs to be done. I think the old ways of uh, decision making based on, you know, my gut feel or based on my experiences has become outdated. You know, imagine today if you go to a, to, to, for your health consultation, right? And if you hear your doctor say, well, based on my gut feel, I think you'll need a surgery. You know, how, how would you respond to that, right? So I think, you know, medical in a sense that has become, um, like the, you, you know, yeah, it, you know, probably it's one of the industry that has relied on data for a very long time. The one example that I can share how uh, we use uh, data most recently is, is on, um, our theme park business, right? So after the MCO, you know, when we were allowed to open theme park, um, understandably the crowd to the theme park is, is much lesser, right? Everybody was cautious sure. and, you know, there were no inbound uh, customers from the overseas. So the crowd was much lesser, but we still uh, needs to open. So what happened is that therefore we, we start using a previous data set that we have to analyze the uh, crowd movement pattern, the consumption pattern, to actually determine, for example, to open certain rides, you know, or attractions, maybe one hour later, 
because you know as the crowd start moving into the theme park so we have a huge theme park right so the rides are everywhere so we started studying you know it how long does it take for for a crowd to move from one place to another place so that sort of saved us a quite quite number of uh, operation cost because you know the the, the when you run you run rides there is certain cost to it right we even use that to data to analyze you know to see uh, the behavior of our consumer um mm-hmm. which food stall is popular which beverage stalls are are more likely visited so then mm-hmm. we use this to make decision you know should we close down this store or should we make it you know uh move the location mm-hmm. a bit so these are you know the most recent example uh, uh that that we have done to help uh manage the cost now to your question uh, are we sourcing data from external party at this moment uh not yet um i think you know within within internally um there is a lot of opportunity you know sunway city it's you know not right for me to say it's not a city but it is a a, a place where you can do everything. basically everything it themselves right so yep. so with that in mind um we believe that we can do a lot more with data mm-hmm. of course uh with and in mind that you know we we definitely need to comply with the PDPA GDPR uh, policies that we have um and and we are very sensitive to to uh data sharing so uh within internally i think we still see a lot of opportunity for us to to make more sense of the data to help our consumers uh make a more informed decision to put into a more targeted uh, investment in terms of marketing so it's something that you know we are still um, working at. and I, and i think that you know uh, it's going to be a journey it, it will never end there so potentially yes we would definitely want um, external data as to you know for example um, how 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 much you know inbound traffic it's it to to come to sunway city and stuff like that okay great so i mean in ties into the next question as well you talked about a journey so uh, i think that the key uh, the crux of this session is to be i want to understand and learn from you guys so can you guys elaborate on how your your organization started this data driven journey you know when did you start and how did you start uh, sam okay so in uh, basically it started in 2018 for me uh, we presented to our board a uh, blueprint of 3 years that uh, i call it toll of tomorrow which coincidentally then became um, the the recognition for the digital transformation award um by I, IDC uh, last month uh, okay. basically it sets, it, yeah it sets out six main pillars uh for our board members and shareholders to appreciate where technology and data is going and we'll we'll achieve this all in six in three years which which we did um so uh from that uh, um blueprint of toll of tomorrow it basically charts out um uh the benefit uh, of using data and technology to the customer to um the bottom line uh meaning the the reduction of our cost of operation uh the increase of revenue or even new revenue oh, the modernization of uh, our infrastructure and competency mm-hmm. and lastly is uh, agility at work So at that time there was no mention of uh, I mean before the uh, toll of tomorrow was mentioned there was no discussion of devops versus waterfall everything was a waterfall project um everything was uh, traditional in that sense and even the cloud wasn't a major conversation let alone execution so mm-hmm. therefore one of the major thing is the acceptance of the mind by every, mm-hmm. everybody uh, minds of shareholders stock management staff they are to uh, invest into a new way of working therefore new way of tools that gives uh, all those three areas top line bottom line and the middle part which is business efficiency uh, basically everybody can see where they play their part and uh, we measure that uh, very diligently in terms of uh, uh benefits uh, gain uh that we measure on a quarterly basis that we report up uh in terms of how much time did we save how much new mm-hmm. revenue uh, did we gain or how much cost did we offset uh this is actually tracked on a quarterly basis on all the data and technology projects it actually it also reveals one major thing that not many people in the organization or even in the industry have data competency 
mm. most have have technology competency, software Correct. development, and even in uh, so and in the in the plus case where we are thirty year old, thirty years old, the word technology actually starts from the word mechanical electronics and electrical mm. te technology actually, thirty okay. years. Old. Cool. So so therefore we have to upscale and shift our workforce competency from the M and M and E E space into the application space into the data space. Uh, only people that have the, the data know-how actually know how to reveal uh, the benefits gained from data because otherwise it would just be a technology and, and app application play. Right. Uh, Kevin, on your side, how did you guys start the journey? Yeah, so um, they, I think data to Sunway and I believe to every organization is just data, right? So we need to be able to convert it to uh, meaningful information. So we started our data journey maybe 15 years back, but it's not what you thought, right? So when we first started, we were looking at data in a very compressed environment, you know, mm -hmm. meaning data within a business, real-time uh, information reporting, data warehouse. You know, I think this 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 uh, term would be familiar yeah. to many of us, right? So our journey started there. And as we became more mature, we sort of expanded the scope a little. We realized that the, the more data we have, the more um, that we did not know. Sounds weird, right? But this is the fact. Data has become like endorphin to us. So <laughs> it, it actually spurs us, you know, to, to satisfy a lot of our curiosity. Hence, you know, as a group, uh, we, 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 we started embarking on this group-wide data insights journey only as recent about a year back, uh, mm -hmm. where we work with a consulting and tech partner to establish a group-wide platform for the group to look at synerg synergizing the data, mm -hmm. right? Along the way, then we realized that, you know, strong data governance framework is required to govern the data, to ensure compliance to the policies that we have, the data sharing, the PDPAs. It started as a concept, uh, really thinking how we can improve um, customer engagement at all touch points and how we can provide, you know, seamless customer experience for our customers. So we were thinking, you know, at one time, uh, somebody was telling me, hey, Kevin, you know, when I started buying a pair of socks for example the next day i get you know um, adver advertisement to to buy a tv at a discounted price so i don't really see how this works so you know <laughs> instead of me, me buying a tv right the next day i should probably get a recommendation to get a, a subwoofer mm. system right so things like that so we sure. sort of went ahead um, and identified partners who can help us you know before selling the idea to our business leader team and whom I said that some some of us were pretty apprehensive at first. You know, a lot of questions were 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 asked, and and that that actually is good, right? So they were asking like, you know, so invest if I invest in this, what is my ROI? You know, do I does it mean that I can spend less dollar in marketing? Things like that. So a lot of questions. But as the journey uh, started, and and we started showing, um, I wouldn't say capability, but I think showing the light at the end of the tunnel, right? A, a bit of light. They, they were saying that, Kevin, I hope it's not a tr on incoming train, right? The light is really the end of the <laughs> tunnel. Um, they, they started to become a strong advocate uh, of this initiative as time progresses. So along the way, we also look at opportunities to embed and develop um, some machine learning, learning capabilities, creating models um, with objective of being able to uh, offer uh, predictive analysis uh, capabilities. Okay, right. Okay, so before I go on to the next question, I think I want to, uh, let's do a, a quick uh, poll uh, with the audience. So I'll, I'll be asking, you know, what is the biggest challenge in starting a data-driven journey? So the poll is going live right now. Okay, so those in the audience, please, uh, please feel free to, to fill this up. And uh, so, yeah, so uh, tied to this uh, question, uh, Kevin, maybe you want to start and continue. So what was the one biggest challenge that you had in starting this, this journey? Wow, you want me to only choose one. I think there's a lot. <laughs> well, okay, then go with uh, me then. <laughs> I think first and foremost um, is definitely knowing what data is required. It's always easier to say that we want you know everything and just dump it into a platform, then pray that it magically comes out with the oh, information that we want. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, so it, it doesn't really work that way. There are still a lot of effort that is required you know, um, identifying the data sets, you know, um, getting uh, our business unit to provide the data. It's, it's definitely challenging. 
Then okay. along the way, uh, we will realize that then we need a lot of uh, data cleansing, data scrubbing, and more likely so we also realize that we may not have sufficient data. Mm. So thoughts have to be in place to try and figure out, you know, where to source for the data. Do we start collecting it? You know, or how do we start collecting it? Or can we uh, acquire it somewhere, uh, somehow? Um, next, perhaps um, the one challenge is, is to ensure strict compliance of PDP and GDPR. Mm -hmm. We don't want to get fouled with, with uh, the authorities. Um, yep. Yep. Issues like, you know, hashing of PII, your personal identification information, establishing the strong um, governance. Mm -hmm. Then uh, finally, I think, you know, building a, a solid team uh, that is able to make good use of information. Your know, data scientists, data experts may not necessarily understand the business, right? So you need good business experience to try and figure out what, what is behind the meaning of, of the information. You know, so let me give you an example, right? So if you're driving, you're driving along the road, you come to a stop at a traffic light and you see in front of you, it's a car, um, uh, he, the, the, the driver has worn down the window. He was taking a smoke in a, in a, in a car. And, you know, after a couple of seconds, then you see through, uh, through your window that he threw the cigarette, uh, in his, but, inside his car. You know, he, he's, he's being a good guy, right? He's not throwing out outside, flicking the cigarette butt outside the window, right? So what this is information that is, uh, visible to you. So what do you make out of that? What, what, what are your yeah. first thoughts that come to your mind, right? So, you know, a lot of people will think that, you know, the guy is probably not very, uh, uh, clean. He's not taking good care of his car, you know, or things like that. But from another angle, right? And, and if, and, and this is something that I've read, right? So, uh, if you are somebody who has experience in, let's say, enforcing the law, so a police may be behind it. So immediately, what comes to the mind of the, the law enforcer is that this guy could be riding on a stolen car. Stolen car. No, no sane person would probably throw a cigarette into his own car. Okay. So he probably pulled the driver aside and true enough, you know, that guy, that, that, that is a stolen car. So this is what I meant by, you know, experience, business, people see data very differently. Um, so we need to have a good mix of uh, business people participating in data, uh, telling us what they want. And through their, their experience in that running that business, uh, they would probably un unearth, you know, show more meaningful insights to, to the data that we have. Okay, cool. Uh, Sam, how about you? What are the challenges that you, you faced when you started this? Okay, so maybe I uh, also take this chance to answer the polling question. Um, yeah, uh, for me, um, the, the, the big challenges are all four. Uh, the biggest challenge, the biggest challenge depends on what is the time of day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. It, it can be, it can be management, talent, and infra. Uh, but all four are critically important. Why? Because, um, for, for example, uh, plus is a thousand kilometers long and not every part of our highway has a good internet connectivity. Uh, ah. We take it for, for granted that, you know, in Cyberjaya, in KL, everything is like 4G and fiber and all, all that. But when it comes to uh, areas further away, even Semenanjung, not even Sabah, Sabah, Sarawak, even Semenanjung, we have a lot of uh, infrastructure issue to drive the data. Uh, so that's one thing that uh, actually keeps us at night sometimes. Uh, and it's the biggest challenge because it's not an easy configuration to solve uh, be, being a linear network instead of a normal you know uh, node to node topology uh, secondly is convincing the management because obviously uh, management has many things to uh, juggle uh, and you know pre covid is something else after covid is something else and you got to be really agile uh, in in the way that the decision making is done uh, however to support the decision making is the agility of the process within the organization. Uh, many processes that all of us are living inside in our companies, we don't really challenge them. We allow the same process to happen that has been inherited from the people before us, especially for an older organization. So we have to challenge that because it will it will go hand in hand together with the agile decision making of management. Uh, 
Uh, of course, management needs to report up to shareholders in terms of, you know, why are we doing this? What's the long, long term? And that's where the budget comes in. But again, given COVID-19, uh, you may not have the budget anymore in a, in a very short period of time. So uh, plus, uh, Malaysia Perhat is experiencing that. Uh, you know, our numbers of customers have dwindled down especially for international vehicles. Uh, Singapore to Malaysia at Johor uh, via our link kedua is almost zero. I mean, that's only like 40,000 a day now. Uh, used, used to be quite a lot of Singapore cars going to Malaysia and Malaysia cars going to Singapore via uh, our international gateway. So that's handled by, by plus. Uh, so, you know, budget needs to be cut down because the revenue has suddenly slumped and every MCO actually is monitored on a weekly basis in terms of revenue. Mm. So, assuming you've already managed uh, D, B, and A, then, of course, you have talent. Good talent in a data-driven journey don't last long. They, they, they join you this year. They can do a lot of cool stuff, but many people want them as well. So, you've got to, you've got to always keep them motivated. Uh, and okay. They can see where they can see where they can be in a few years time you know could they become the cdo of the organization could they become the, the cio even though they're only 24 years old because they they will be pinched by other people uh and that's what we have noticed and this uh so yeah to me abcd is the all the biggest okay. things that it depends on the time of the day. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, everything changes. <laughs> That's why, you know, uh, Soma, you asked me the first question, one biggest challenge. So it's not one, it's Very many, much, right? I <laughs> understand. Now, because actually I would love to list more, but uh, the, the, the link tool only limited me to four options. <laughs> sure. but, but but looks like, uh, yeah, I think talent is the biggest, second and close behind is convincing the management. Uh, followed by budget and tools and infra uh, uh, as a tie. Okay, so I've got some uh, questions here on the uh, comment section. So I think there's one for Kevin. Uh, so Kevin, the data security has always been about building higher walls or tougher encryption. Uh, what do you think of data security in terms of reducing the surface area of attack? Instead of data stored in centralized servers, data and personal data can be stored in decentralized servers. Yep. So um, thank you for the question, right? So for me, I think before we started um, this data consolidation or data insights journey, that is definitely one area that, you know, uh, we thought a lot about, right? So imagine that, you know, previously before all of this, we have data scattered everywhere. And mm -hmm. and now um, to, to have sort of, you know, to realize, you know, the, 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 the benefits, we are putting everything together. So we were thinking, wow, now we are putting all the treasure in one place, you know, so the, the, the hackers and, you know, the pirates are drooling, you know, so, so it's easier for me to come in and attack. So what do we do about it? Mm -hmm. So, of course, um, there's been a lot of thoughts put in. So should we, should we uh, decentralize it? And then, you know, should we put it everything together and break it out apart again? So a lot of these things comes into the picture. Um, then also on, on another school of thought, right? So um, somebody was telling me, so. Um, so, Kevin, if you put everything in one place, uh, doesn't it make it easier to manage it? You just, uh, you know, put in all the security investment in one place. You do not need to worry about it. It's like your house. Is it better mm -hmm. to have one door or many doors, right? The more entry points that you have, probably the mm -hmm. risk of, you know, thieves coming in, finding weaker points, uh, it, it, it becomes easier. So, mm -hmm. you know, for me, I think there is uh, no right or wrong into the mm -hmm. strategy that every organization has. Uh, it, it really depends, you know, what is most important, how do you secure it? Um, mm -hmm. I think at the end of the day, a lot of uh, uh, research has been done that a lot of time uh, data become, you know, security is an issue more often from internal rather than external, right? Uh, People make mistakes, genuine mistakes, right? They do not know, they do not understand the severity, the, the risk associated to, to performing certain actions, the lack of awareness. And, and this is something that we are very, um, you know, cautious about. So we, we, we would like to hear, you know, different sorts of ideas, definitely from the floor. You know, we are always learning. Like I said, you know, this is probably our first and second year into it. Um, we are sort of like, you know, still learning, you know, what is out there, who can help us. So, you know, I, I would be definitely very glad to to talk to, you know, people who can address, 
you know, this kind of challenges for us. Okay, so that, by the way, that question came from uh, Jason Shong from Data Swift. He's the Asia Regional Director. Uh, since it's an interesting question, Sam, can 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 you take a stab at it as well? Sure, sure. Um, I've always been a proponent of a uh, center of data instead of a data center. Um, <laughs> yeah, because to me, it's about following the data uh, and uh like yes uh, because we have pdpa and we have ban negara risk management it framework and all that basically talks about data uh, so we need to know uh how do we encapsulate uh cyber security or data security around that data and some can be located in a particular um uh, uh, server location it could be on premise could be off premise could be public cloud private cloud but we know what the data is so uh, I've always been pushing for uh, centers of data instead of data center. That's number one. Number two is I've noticed that even though if you have a bunch of good application software developers like myself, I have a hundred and hundred or so application guys that that develop, but they they but they go via the DevOps model instead of the DevSecOps model. Mm. I uh, I prefer the DevSecOps model because we can then minimize the the unintended security gaps when the application has uh, been deployed. It's, it's actually security being thought of from the beginning instead of an afterthought. Uh, of course, we have to retrofit security in some respect, especially when it's a legacy application. And that one can only go so far because of the infrastructure uh, lifespan, some are EOL and stuff like that. So by having uh, security as uh, one of the culture of application development that also minim minimizes data security because applications generate data whether it's the actual business data or maybe machine level data it generates data so DevSecOps and centers of data are the two things that we that we look at quite often and try not to put all the things in one in one bucket or in one cloud uh, try to separate them uh, yes it may sound like we have multiple houses but it, it is actually to follow what the data is saying uh, and what is the risk exposure of the data? If if it's the if the if is the risk exposure is low, then we know what sort of infrastructure to to look to look for. If the risk exposure is high and very sensitive, then we know what sort of infrastructure to look for as well. Um, and then access to all this data is also via data governance, uh, mm -hmm. which we place a lot of importance on. Meaning that not everybody can have access to the raw data. Maybe most people can have data to can have access it to the aggregated uh, mm -hmm. uh, high level, but to the raw data, it's limited by data governance uh, and, and policy. Okay, great. Okay, uh, just another question here. Uh, so both your organizations are mostly recognized as uh, brick and mortar businesses. So how do you change people's perception uh, that you are no longer brick and mortar, but you have become data driven? Kevin, um, I believe, yeah, yeah. So, so I believe in one thing, right? So, uh, it's very difficult to change people's perception once people have perceived it, you know. Um, and and really, um, in in Sunway Group, I mean, we still acknowledge that there are some businesses that are traditionally brick and mortar. You know, yeah. how how do you, you know, change a quarry business, right? You know, um, for example, right? We still need to extract a lot of uh, mineral from oh. from place so rather than trying to change people's perception i think it is important for us to focus on how do we then enable the business with the data so recently we talked to some of the business leaders right so a lot of um, conversations are surrounding iot's now right um, because all these traditional businesses are asset heavy in nature so we are thinking about how do we collect or start collecting data from machines you know, uh, rather than, you know, conventional way of, of getting. So how do you collect data from machines? Predict machines failure, you know, uh, uh, looking at the machines output and productivity, you know, to increase also, you know, potentially our revenue and profit. So these are some thoughts that, that we are doing. And, and it's fine that, you know, for us, I think it's fine that, you know, people perceive some of a business still as brick and mortar. But I think the value really today we're looking is how does this data how can we think about you know how data can assist and drive the business moving forward so so that, that, that that's my take 
Okay, right. Sam? Um, maybe I will start by saying this, um, because we have 156 people in the call. Um, can you imagine to all the 156 that you are going to interact tomorrow, Saturday, with a digital government? A government that is 100% di digital in nature. Can you imagine that? So it does not mean that the government disappears or there's no more parliament. It just mm -hmm. means that as a citizen, as a rakyat of Malaysia, you have more than one way to interact with every facet of the government, be it medical, election, education, and so on. So uh, I'm a big, big believer in that because, uh, you know, if you look at Estonia government, for example, they are one of the models that they actually have changed themselves to serve their population, uh, even though it's a small country. So yep. therefore, you come back to the corporate level. Uh, for me, uh, a customer needs to see that when the customer interacts with the organization, it has now, the interaction has evolved. Maybe that is still the same way, still there, but maybe now limited. Like, for example, walk into the bank branch. It's still there, mm -hmm. but limited. But there are more ways that the customer can interact with the uh, service provider. That's not number one. So that's what we've been doing. You know, we, we launched the first chatbot and we, we did more video analytics and many more customer facing so that customer has more than one way, especially more digital way to interact with the organization. Secondly, it's not just the customer, the support ecosystem, the vendors, the subcontractors. Mm -hmm. Uh, especially during COVID-19, where we are very conscious that we, uh, that we are with, withholding payment because of the slow process. Everybody needs their payment to be done quickly because they have, you know, a lot of downstream workers, contractors and all that. So they also need to see that the process of submitting claims and getting money into their bank account, and I'm talking from the contractor's point of view, uh, it has become faster. Uh, so that then they can keep themselves sustainable and be able to also serve us as the larger organization. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't disappear tomorrow, which is a sad thing if that happens. So yep. first, it's about the ecosystem that is around the the company. So the customer and the subcontractors. -contract and also, like I said before, imagine the ecosystem around the government. If the ecosystem around the government sees that the government itself has evolved from whatever it is today into a pure digital, okay. therefore, if it's digital, it's data driven, the okay. economy return will be multiple fold. That's it. Okay, good point. Uh, okay, so let's move on to the next question here. So, okay, so you guys already gave examples here and there about you know, some of the stuff that you're doing. Is the, can you give us a bit more detail in terms of some of the benefits that you have gained because of this? Maybe share some success stories specifically. Sam? Okay. Um, I think the first success story is customer satisfaction index. Uh, yeah, so back to my previous statement. Uh, customers, actually, like customers like you and I, when we use the highway, we, we are driven by emotions. So when we are stuck at the toll plaza or stuck in a, in a, in a dirty toilet and, you know, the, and the food is cold or, or accident ahead that you were not informed of, your satisfaction goes lower and you are the paying customer. So we place a lot of importance in uh, understanding how happy are you and are you actually uh, willing to be a promoter, a net promoter score of high enough that you will actually promote us beyond another competitor such as a uh -huh. budget alliance. Yeah. Right. So to, to us, that is that is one uh, that of the benefit uh, that that we have to bring in better customer experience uh, to our our um, you know range of customers, which range from you know passengers like us to commercial truckers to motorcyclists, and it has to be twenty four by seven. Right. Okay, Kevin. Um, so for us, it would, you know, similarly, it's customer service, but, you know, I've shared also the example of how our theme park used the data. Yep. So that is yep. definitely yep. one success story. Now, the other part would be, um, where do we put our marketing dollar? So I think it, it has more visibility now for us. Um, traditionally, when we say that, you know, the marketing folks are always the people, you know, besides IT, right? So I know IT also spends a lot of money and people say, why do IT spend so much and there is no return, right? So I think perhaps the other, the other similar divisions that have this challenge is the marketing folks, right? So if I advertise, if I put a marketing dollar, how do I know that your marketing strategy really works? Mm -hmm. So, so this is something that has benefited us. So we know exactly now uh, where to put the dollar. 
Uh, in fact, you know, one of the questions that our stakeholder has is that with this digital journey, would it cut down on the marketing cost? So the mm. answer to that is that probably not. Probably you increase your marketing spend because you know exactly where you're going to target, who you're going to target, and the results are going to be very apparent uh, with this uh, digitalization or big data, the, the data analytics journey that we have. Okay. Okay. Cool. Uh, so I think we uh, we have about ten minutes. So in the people in the audience, if you have more questions, please feel free to, uh, feel free to post it in the comment section. Uh, next question. So what are your new or future plans in store for your organization, Kevin? Anything that you can share um, publicly? <laughs> sure. So so you know we we have a lot of uh, plans you know ahead uh, challenges. Of course, uh, we're still going to go um, very aggressively on uh, this data-driven uh, project that we have. Um, you know, when, when we first embark on this, we, we need to have a mindset that, you know, this is not a sprint. You know, mm -hmm. being Usain Bolt in this category will not cut it, right? So yeah. perhaps a marathon, you know, not even one marathon, probably going to have 100 marathons. You know, that, that is the metaphor that I'm going to use. It's, it's for the long haul, right? So it's, 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 it's never easy. You know, there are a lot of, as is now, there is already a lot of challenges, but we foresee that there will be many challenges lying ahead. If you are thinking that this is going to be a, you know, a hit and run project that, you know, I, I straight away will reap the benefit for it. I think it's something that, um, it is not, um, I wouldn't say not right, but I think it is something that will not benefit you as much. So we, we, we're going to focus a lot on how um, we can continue to really um, extract value out of the data that we have. Um, of course, realizing after a year that there are, for us, uh, already insufficient data, you know, a lot of thoughts and strategy in how do we get more data uh, without breaking the law. Uh, for example, how do we share? Um, how do we uh, provide better experiences for our customer. So there has been talks going around building that, you know, so-called super app that everybody is talking about. So it becomes a single seamless platform. You know, and, you know, Sunway, it's very diverse. So we don't really know, you know, for example, but, but there are thoughts, you know, so, so when we talk about super app, right? So we talk about cross sell, upsell. So people, mm -hmm. you know, one of my, my colleagues was saying that, you know, when you come to hotel, right, usually when you go to a hotel or go to the theme park, right, um, it is what usually people are happy, you know, on a holiday mood. You don't want to start promoting our healthcare to them, right? <laughs> you know, because the <laughs> next day, <laughs> the next day, you know, you may, you, you may end up with, uh, you know, maybe your cholesterol is high, you have high sugar <laughs> level, and you don't want to start eating in a hotel and, you know, you, you get scared playing a theme park. So a lot of, you know, thoughts has to be put in <laughs> to see how we synergize the data even. So yeah, uh, we, we're still going to focus a lot on this, this area aspect. Okay. Sam? Um, what are the future plans? I suppose no. the most obvious one that all of you will appreciate is that uh, imagine Plus Highway and many other highways have no more toll barriers and toll plaza. So Similar. Yeah, and, and as Malaysians, we have seen that happening all over the world. And the reason why it is not happening in Malaysia is not a technology question, it's a data sharing question. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, when you remove the toll plaza, um, the power of enforcement does not rely under Kementerian uh, Kerja right. Raya. The right. power of enforcement relies under different ministries. So right. these different ministries like PDRM and JPJ, they require access to data to for them to enforce uh, vehicles who did not pay for their tolls. We, we need that enforcement to happen so that Plus Highway or any other highway don't lose money when when we remove the uh, exit counter, like, you know, in the shop, when you when you remove the <laughs> cashier, uh, people still pay. <laughs> so. Right. Yeah, so therefore it's a completely a data sharing situation that's not happening. So that situation is what we call uh, multi-lane free flow that the government is expecting to happen in about five years time. Uh, so I think now you can appreciate that it's not a technology issue. It is a data sharing and policy issue. However, to facilitate towards that, we are uh, 
we are uh, piloting uh, video analytics, which we have done at about 12, uh, 7 Toll Plaza, where a lot of the detection of your vehicle, number plate, Excel, logo, classes, is all done by CCTV and deep learning. Uh, we, we did that, uh, and the accuracy is 99%, so that then the detection of your identity of your vehicle is uh, very clear. The payment that comes from the usage of the highway is also very clear, not just from maybe one method of payment, but several methods of payment. And if you don't pay, also very clear because we have uh, data sharing and data enforcement by other agencies. So everybody benefits and it also increases the economic benefit when you drive uh, without congestion on a highway. Okay. Uh, okay, I think I just got a reminder that we have about uh, four minutes left and I have a lot of questions down here, but uh, let's try to wrap it up. Uh, going forward, okay, we have a lot of people in the audience here, you know, they want to start on, on, on a data-driven journey. Uh, what will be your one key advice to them? I know, okay, we already covered all the challenges, but what advice do you think would be the best to give? Sam? Um, the first advice, the only advice I would say is to keep it agile. Uh, hmm. keep yourself, keep the team and educate management and shareholders on the agile approach because once you start to play with data, you don't want data hmm. to be stale, meaning right. the data is showing something but no one's doing anything about it. Right. Right. Yeah. So agility okay. is very important. Okay, Kevin? So I would think that, you know, to convince, you know, the management um, on, on this journey, I think we need to start small. It, it's good to have a very big picture. You know, we want to be the likes of Google and Facebook and all the marketing companies, digital marketing companies. It's, it's good to have that vision. But at the end of the day, I think it's important for us to create, craft a business case, uh, mm -hmm. quick wins, right? Start small um, and, and and get help if you need to. Get help from the expert. Talk to people around the industry who has experience don't just jump for the sake of jumping. Get a lot of information before you start, you know, even formulating the strategy for your businesses. Okay. Thank you. So uh, before I do a wrap up, I think uh, let's do a group fee. Uh, let me start this. Okay. So I've engaged the group fee. So please feel free to take a photo. Okay, so uh, first of all, thank you so much to, to both the panelists. I mean, it's been a very insightful uh, session. I think I have lots of questions here. I think we have not answered, but I think the, 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 the information that we've got from both the panelists has been very valuable, very useful. And we really hype, uh, appreciate to, uh, both Sam and Kevin for, for taking time and joining us. Okay, and on, on our side, uh, as you know, MDAC actually has just launched our Data Kita uh, uh, website. So those are interested in, in starting their journey to become a data-driven uh, uh, organization, uh, please feel free to go to mdac.my slash datakita. That's mdac.my slash datakita. Uh, and you'll find out you know, for what are the helps that you can get. You can come and talk to us and see how we can actually reach out and, and work together and you know to help you on, on, on to become a data-driven journey as well. Uh, and at the same time, we also have this program called uh, Data Driven Enterprise Program, which actually facilitates business enterprises and professionals to embark on a data-driven journey and to be also AI ready in the future. So information for that program is also on, on, on the Data Kita website. So please come and talk to us if you're interested to seize this new business opportunity and take your enterprise to the next level. Okay. And once again, thank you so much, Kevin, Sam, and um, all the best to everyone. And thank you for everyone for joining us this morning. Goodbye. Thank you. Take care. Thank you Bye. Very much. Thank you, Kevin. Bye. Bye. Bye, guys.